Essential, that was the name of the company that Andy Rubin, one of the original creators of Android, started back in 2015. Two years later, Essential released their first phone, the PH1. Many people balked at the hefty price tag of $699, but as time has gone on, the phone has received numerous price drops, even bringing the device down to $244 a few weeks ago. With the price so low today, there's one burning question. Has the Essential PH1 held up? This is a long-term review. Getting started, let's take a look at the build quality. The phone has quite a heft to it, and the titanium frame gives it a very industrial look and feel. The model I have is the Halo Grey, which is an Amazon exclusive. On the back of the device, the matte black finish makes for a rather stealthy appearance. Inside the phone, the specs aren't half bad. The hardware configuration for the PH1 was quite common across most devices released in 2017. A Snapdragon 835 processor, 4GB of RAM, a 3040mAh battery, and 128GB of storage earned the phone the title of flagship for 2017. However, there are a few issues when it comes to cell reception. Perhaps it's related to some of the design choices, but there have been many reports from users that the phone has issues with connectivity. Patrons of T-Mobile specifically have seen the device disconnect from mobile data randomly and miss calls. This may affect other carriers, but the exact cause is unclear. This, I would say, is the first problem with the Essential phone. As far as biometrics go, the PH1 has a circular fingerprint scanner situated on the rear of the device, in a similar location as Google's Pixel line. While it's not technically the fastest fingerprint scanner in the world, I never feel like I'm waiting for the scanner to authenticate. It's near instant. The display is probably one of the most important components of a smartphone. This phone has a 5.71 inch LCD screen, despite being a medium sized device. This is thanks to the minimal bezels on the top and sides of the display. The PH1 isn't necessarily bezel-less as there is a bit of a chin to this phone. Additionally, the aspect ratio is 1910, which is a bit unique for smartphones. As far as the colors go, they're decent. They're not Samsung saturated, but nor are they as weak as the Pixel 2 XL's default calibration. I'd say they're somewhere in the middle. The worst part of this display, however, is the touch latency. It's terrible. Scrolling through Instagram, for instance, makes me feel like the screen is constantly playing catch up, always a bit behind where my finger is. Some have speculated that this is due to the low pull rate for the digitizer, but Essential has yet to confirm that that is the cause. The Essential has a rather unique camera setup. While it does have a total of three cameras like most modern phones, two on the rear, one selfie, it is the rear cameras that are a bit different. One is a normal wide angle shooter and the other is a black and white sensor. Supposedly, this is to enhance detail in the photos. At launch, reviewers criticized the phone's camera capabilities, citing poor dynamic range and low light performance. For a $700 phone, it seemed like it had the camera of a $250 device. But over time, and after many software updates, the photos coming out of the device slowly got better and better. Now, it feels like your typical smartphone shooter. It's no Google Pixel, but it can do for your usual Instagram post or selfie. Personally, I installed the Google Camera HDR Plus port as soon as I got the device, and that has improved photos dramatically. Here are a few shots I took using this device. One of the greatest strengths of the PH1 is its software. The OS Essential Ships is a flavor of Android that is as close to stock as it gets. Running Android 9.0 Pi with the September security patch, this device is still up to date with the latest version of Android. Essential has been one of the best companies after Google with regards to updating its phones, which shouldn't be a surprise knowing that Andy Rubin is at the helm. Literally minutes after the Android 9.0 Pi name reveal and launch, Essential pushed out the OTA for its customers, giving them the latest and greatest OS release. The only Essential branded software on the phone is the camera app and their launcher, Quickstep, which is based on Launcher 3. Using the OS feels snappy, although a few times when I've been using it, it started getting choked up. Day-to-day -day use has been fine, however. Having the notch has been an interesting experience. While Android Pi does support display cutouts, a few apps have acted a bit weird around the protruding bezel. The toolbar for YouTube Studio, for example, is a bit obscured by the notch. It's not a big deal, but it is a bit visually distracting. A year after its launch, what's the verdict? While this is a great phone, I can't help but feel it's nearing its end of life. Regular software updates are great, but lackluster hardware, particularly the screen and signal issues, make it a hard sell today. A few months ago, sure, but today, well, maybe. If you're the type of adventurous individual who isn't afraid of hacking their device to work for them, there is no doubt that the Essential will have a long life thanks to the ROM community. 
you'll probably be able to flash this phone with the latest version of Android for years to come, both thanks to the developer friendliness of the device and the fact that it supports Project Treble, meaning the software update process is seamless. However, if you're the type of person who just wants to buy a new phone and use it like a normal person, I'd look somewhere else. The Essential PH1 has had an amazing run, and it still seems to be doing well in the software update space. However, the various issues with the device caused me to wonder if we should consider the PH1 the PH done.